Well, what's up, folks? Today we're gonna be doing a gonna be doing a video on live scope. I got the helm back. I'm excited. You know how much I loved showing videos of live scope, and those videos have done so well. So today, that's the start of it. We're gonna be doing it. But before we get out on the water and enjoy this beautiful day, we've got an absolutely stunning day uh, here in the middle of October. Um, we gotta do some work. So unfortunately, we're gonna do some work around here. I'll tell you a little bit what's going on with me, and then I also. Again, this is gonna have live scope all over it. That's what this video is all about, bringing back the helm on live scope, which is pretty exciting stuff. The problem with these old decks is that they rot out. It's like I'm gonna to have to replace every single board over the next, uh, <laughs> who knows, over next year, every one of these stupid boards is gonna be, uh, is gonna be replaced. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, so outside of the live scope and the new 8612 I've got on the boat, we're gonna be doing those videos. It's gonna be awesome. Is uh, we sold our house. We sold our house uh, that's not on the lake. So we own a house on the lake and uh, we are gonna build a second house on the lake. So that's our process for the next, you know, six to eight months. So today I'm kind of preparing the area for the excavator that's gonna come in here and wipe out a lot. So a lot on the schedule for sure. It kind of stinks when I'm out here and the boat's on the rack. I gotta, I gotta fill it up by five gallons at a time, which is time consuming between the guide trips. So uh, every time I come out here, I bring five gallons of gas to, to fill her up. So the boat needs a wash, I'm not gonna lie. Can't wait to get it off here. We're gonna go doing the crappie expo here shortly. Me and Marcus are, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So if you have an interest in checking us out there, check out Branson, crappie expo. We're gonna show up there October 25th and be there the entire week through Saturday. So swing by maybe the Cornfield Crappie Gear booth. We will definitely be hanging out around there and uh, love to talk crappie with you. Our next project is to is to move the sand into the uh, the beach area here. All right, folks, this episode has turned into a lot more than I thought it was going to. I'm going to talk about monitors. I'm going to talk about how to use LiveScope. I'm going to talk about some of my strategies and setups with LiveScope. Folks, there's a lot involved with this video. If you didn't notice, this is 27 minutes long of pure LiveScope. Uh, whatever it is you need to know, you're going to find it in this video. Now, we're doing some work around the house. No joke. No joke. That's part of what's going on in my life. I'm going to build another house, the one that we're going to live in next to the rental that we have. And uh, we're going to get done with this work right here, and we're going to be on the water using LiveScope, the helm feature that I have loved ever since LiveScope came out. So sit back, relax, enjoy, please subscribe. We're about to put some major slabs in the boat. So yeah, let me show you around the lot. So this is our house that we have here currently right behind me. It's a very nice vacation rental. Um, you can check it out at fireflyshores.com. It rents out pretty much every single day in the summer, but... It's beautiful all you guide trips know because a lot of times we put in right here so but we're going to be building next door which is you really can't visualize the lot right now but it's right there once it's cleared out you'll you'll see how nice and expansive it is it's a it's a narrow lot but we're gonna have a we're have a good time so we're about to get on the water we're gonna build a little fire pit right now for the uh because we're gonna have to move that fire pit to here in order for us to excavate that's right, folks. So me and Marcus will be team three pound fishing at the Mr. Crappie Invitational at Branson. We will also be able to meet us, greet us, talk to us. We're gonna talk crappie the whole time we're there uh, at Branson. You'll probably find us in a lot of our sponsors' boots, especially Cornfield Crappie Gear. I can see us totally spending a lot of time over there. We just love hanging out with our buddy Mark. But uh, me and Marcus, we plan on doing very good in that tournament. That's our goal. We're gonna work hard at it. So please come out, support us, and we'd love to talk crappie with you. All right, before we get on the water, let's talk about the different monitors that I've had so that you know why we're now back. Well, we're not back, we're to an 8612, that's what we currently have. We started off with the 1042. 
We also ordered a 1242. Um, <coughs> the feature I love most about this unit is that A, you can use Active Captain to video on your phone. And number two is I do like the dial. I have to admit that's nice, quick, and you get used to the dial very quickly. I then moved to the 126 SV. The reason why I made this move is because of pure quality of the image itself. Now, when I had the 12 or the 1042, I was always talking about how I was against touchscreen. And to be honest with you, I still don't see it as much of an advantage whatsoever. Although the 126 SV is a touchscreen. So I took that and I said, you know what? It's okay. I'm okay with a touchscreen as long as I get the highest quality picture that I can afford. Um, I enjoyed the 126 SV. Uh, the reason why I then upgraded from the 126 SV to the 8612, now that's the top of the line uh, that the Garmin allow, or has that offers, um, is at the end of the day, I know that I need to have the best quality picture I can have. And the 8612 even beats the 126 SV. Now again, it's a touch screen, um, something that I'm not too happy about again, but it, it is what it is. And, um, but it also allows me to video using Active Captain. The 126 SV did not. And that was a major drawback for me. Not only because I wanted to upgrade my, my image, I also could not video on my phone like you're gonna see today. So I now have the 8612, it's touch screen, it's got the best picture that you could possibly get from Garmin. Um, the drawback of the 8612 immediately when I, when I, it doesn't have a quick way to get to your favorites. Um, I did like the three little three or four buttons on the 126 SV that you could just push the button and it would go to your map if you wanted to. Um, there's a couple of pushes that you have to make to get to those, those functions on the, on the 8612. But be, beyond that, it doesn't have any fat around it. It's a really small looking unit. Um, it is streamlined in my opinion, and I really do enjoy it. And you do get used to tapping the screen to make it the forward view happen. So I'm good. I'm excited to show it to you today. We're going to be doing a lot of, uh, like I said, live scope. And uh, I just have a little bit more work to do, and we're going to head out there. So check out this fire pit. probably not the way to do that. Damn it. I'm not an electrician. No duh. That was close. My gosh. All right. We're back on the water. Finally. Finally, we're back on the water. And we've got the 8612, which is amazing. The beautiful thing about LiveScope, I've said it all along, is that it really is a plug and play. You have to do a little bit of tweak on your gain to accommodate your lake. But, but at the end of the day, nothing like side imaging, nothing like it down imaging. Uh, very little movements, little tweaks that you can make just to have a great picture. Now, this is a 12 inch 8612. Uh, this is their top of the line. If you want a 16 inch, go for it. But I can tell you right now, this picture is fantastic and perfect for me. I use the Cornfield Crappy Gear Mount Bridge Telescope, goes from 20 to 30 inches. And you can check out Cornfield Crappy Gear. Um, I like it up here in my face. I can't stand looking down and going like this looking for it. So give Cornfield Crappie Gear a call. I'll put the number on the screen. And I'm going to be showing you some live scope photos here really quick. All right, so there's a great picture of a structure that has some fish on the top. Looks like they're roughly around 10 feet. There's not a lot of them. Um, but all you do is you're going to drop down. There I am right there. And we're gonna see if we can't get some out. Well, they really wanna move over onto it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, now I am trying a different bait here. I wonder how they're gonna react to it. I probably should have started off with something that was... a little bit more known. But you see, they don't always bite, folks. That's a perfect example right there. All right, so there's a nice little back end of a stump. Got some fish. Now, I like the pitch to the fish. So you're gonna see this guy swinging in. There it is swinging in. 
that's what I, I really think that movement triggers a bite whether it's a drop or a, a, a swing a pendulum I really enjoy that that's the pitching there's some really good fish there it looks like so here it is swinging in again probably let's see if we can get it in there there it comes right there barely can see it there it is and there it is there's your first fish of the day and that is a movement I, I, I think it's maybe a reaction bite, but I think they really like that movement of that tail, the movement of the jig, and you know, some days it doesn't, but that's my big thing every day is I'm trying to figure out if they like the movement or if they want it sitting still. And I can't emphasize enough that I like pitching to fish. And if you look back at the crappie uh, national championship, crappie masters national championship, that was a big part of what everybody was doing was pitching to them and casting to them. Um, I figured out that I can pitch to up to roughly around 20 feet comfortably. See, uh, if I miss it here, I just drop it right down on them. Here it comes. And that can even make the movement move out away from the boat. There it is right there, moving outside, away from the boat. And he grabbed it, he touched it for just a second. So there it is. There's a nice, a nice pile. Probably just eaters. Doesn't seem like they want to touch it when I just sit it down. They're really nice and easy for them. But that's just this pile. Every what I've determined is every pile's different. You got to find an active pile. You got to find piles that have more active fish. Uh, just because one pile is not that active this way doesn't mean the next one won't so but i always start off with the pitches i, I think that's just the way to go and it, you know obviously showing it right here there it is coming in there's a fish coming in from behind i see so all right we're going to move on to a different a different location so as we get to this new location let's talk about setting up your active captain first and foremost you got to download the app on your phone just do that it's it's easy every unit i've had uses active captain it's just whether or not it's able to video straight to your phone or not so the next thing is to set up your wi-fi on your unit make sure that your unit has they all have wi-fi set up your unit to have a wi-fi signal then connect your phone and that wi-fi signal together and your active captain app will then work and function to your unit just like it does to your radio or anything else it's going to start communicating with your your unit so get the app set up your wi-fi on your unit connect those two and if you have a 1042 any of the um what are they called uh 1042 1242 the 8612 any of those you're going to be able to video what you're seeing onto your phone directly. So what I want to show you is that you don't necessarily have to see a ton of fish to catch fish. And you know, a lot of these fish will hide in the dirt, the mud, down low. And so I try to explore every little thing I can because they'll hide uh, down there and they'll just pop out of nowhere or what you think is maybe only one fish. It might turn into two or three. And I'm a firm believer those big fish like to be alone. They like to be at the bottom. Uh, whenever I see something streak up from the mud, I'm always anticipating a pretty big fish. I don't know why it is that way, but it, it's definitely something I, I've noticed uh, watching live scope. So as you can see, there's probably one fish down there. It's kind of a stumpy area. Uh, we're just dropping down there to see what this little bait. Let's see if we can, there it is. It showed up finally can draw out of this stump maybe and maybe nothing you know but to me it's this is way more there's something that got drawn out and then of course that looks like a small fish but see these guys back here maybe around the 15 foot mark those look like good fish and i'll still pitch to them so those guys are just hanging out down there pretty deep 16 feet i don't like the fact that they're so deep but I do like their size, so I'm gonna drop down to them. Okay, we got some attention. But you don't always have to see a plum tree of fish. You don't always have to see structure. 
I can see that stump right there and it looks like there's fish inside those roots. They look like they're just in there in the just just in there for protection. Sometimes you rub by that that root just right. That fish will just come screaming out of there. So there I am. I just opened up right on top of that stump. And this is the perfect line. I'm coming right down the stump. And if anything's truly interested in this bait, Ooh, did you see that one come? And he did, he took it. Did you see that one come? This is a good fish. This guy came from the, this is exactly what I just talked about. Crazy how that just happened. This is a good fish. And he came right from the bottom, man. This is a freaking hammer. This is a hammer. And what did I just tell you? That's a, now look at his belly. He's got dirt on it. I caught him on one of my little hair jigs I've been making. And this is a perfect, perfect example of a fish not being a lot of fish around it's down there deep it, it all of a sudden magically appears this thing this thing inhaled it look at that that's a hammer that's a freaking solid fish that's a 13 and a half every bit of it wow great all right so i always start my scanning roughly around 30 to 40 yards 30 to 40 feet and then I like the pitch now these fish as you can see here on live scope are pretty high So I'm gonna have to pitch from a distance because I don't believe in getting on top of anything That's less than nine feet and I'm gonna have to just You know manage the line to keep them keep that bait up there with them. So it's coming in here and as it gets closer I'm going to uh, scan in a little bit. So there's now I'm at 30 and This is a really good sized pile of fish um, I don't, I can't really tell if they're that big or not, but so I'll pitch right there. Here it comes. And then here it comes into the picture. There it is. And all I do is I try to manage that line right through that school of fish. And oddly enough, they didn't take it that time. And that went right through it. So there they are right there. Now at this point, since they're so close to me, I can just drop down in there. And what I found is every every fish is different, obviously, but you know, keeping it just plumb still, there it is right there, is the best ticket. So ooh, it actually hit the camera. So this is just a little eater, but I can tell there's not really, they're not that big a fish, but Nice little school of fish right there. Perfect example. So that's probably a 10 and a half fish, 10 and a half inch fish. So there's your school right there. Not a school, but kind of a plum tree of fish right there. Again, I can't really tell if they're that big. I'm gonna pitch down into them. And there it is. I try to keep it right on top of them. So there's the bite right there. And you probably didn't see that because it was right in the middle of the school, but there's your crappie right there. And that's a good solid eater right there. And he's not happy. He is not happy. That's an 11 inch fish. That's a nice thick back, nice thick back. And of course we're letting them go. So there's your school again. Not school, your, your, your fish on the structure. And uh, there it is. And I'm, there's my bait right there coming in. Now a lot of times I'll direct my bait using my trolling motor. So if it's down there right now, I'm now kind of pushing away from the, the fish to kind of make this bait swim into them. So sometimes you'll see it disappear like that. And then I come back to it, and that's just to give me movement through that school of fish. So they got a little spooked. You can see they went to the ground. But when I turned around here, I, I noticed a school out here. So you see this right here? That is a school of fish. 
this is the great thing about my home lake at the winter time is there there'll be a ton of these so i like to pitch to it pitch to it from afar here it comes right there and we try to pick one off the top and he, there it is he did take it actually funny so that's a perfect example of when you're out there you're looking at your piles you're not just focused in on the piles when you scan around check around what's going on and that was a school of fish that is just cruising around out here and it looks like they're they're just about the same size so here they are again and i'm going to pitch behind me and this is time on the water folks it doesn't happen overnight to be able to do this um it's it's knowing your boat and getting an idea where these fish probably are going from experience. It's time on the water. Um, it's all it is. So there it is. I'm flipping right on top of them. There it is. And you just keep it right there because you never know one's going to shoot away from it. So here comes one that's trying to, but then he turned back. All right, so we go back after the school this way. Trust me, when you find a school of fish that have 14 inches in it, most of the time they're going to be all 14 inches. So you stick with that school as long as you can. Good solid fish here sitting at 15, 16 feet. This is a great example of wanting to use the pitch right there. They're almost at they're 12 feet. These are good fish. I'm going to zoom out to get it to 20. There it is right in there with them. Bam! You see that guy just dart at it? Good night. Good eater. Not big monsters yet, but good eater. Boy, he is bleeding. That was a good... Got my phone all messed up. Ooh, baby. So, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is about boat control. And I'm not perfect and neither is anybody else. Um, but some days you're on and some days you're not, I guess. And boat control is extremely important. To be able to work active captain and, and live scope and all this stuff, getting your nose into the wind is the number one thing. So when you approach a, a pile, you want to make sure you go around it. Whatever you have to do to make sure your nose is in the wind. Very important. Boat control is without a doubt one of the most important things. You, you can't be in a rush to fish a, a brush pile. You'll waste it because you'll spook them and they'll be off and you'll be on to your next brush pile. So here I am. I took a long way around. I scan back out to kind of find back where they're at. And there was a lot there. There they are. That's a lot of fish. Let's see if we can't get some big fish off this stuff. Again, they're they're pretty high up in the water column. There they are. So when they get to about 10, that's when I do my pitch. So here I am positioning my boat while that bait's doing its initial fall. There it is coming in. There it is coming in, right into it, right into it. Again, I'm trying to keep those fish out there around 10 feet. And then when it goes through, sometimes I'll push right to the pile, right back to the, the brush pile and see if I can't push that bait back into it real quick without having to make a pitch. I'm trying to stay off my trolley motor because right now they are right underneath us. See, he looked at it and decided he did not want it. This was just caught on a jig I made last night. I'm calling it Bubblicious. 
I'll show you what Bubblicious is. That's a good dish right there, folks. That's a 12 inch fish right there. That's a hammer right there. Well, okay, maybe not a hammer, but still a really good fish. Solid, solid back. A real solid back. So this is Bubblicious right there. Small tail, but a lot of flash. Pink, pink, yellow. If you look at old school Bubblicious packages, that's Bubblicious right there. There it was. All right, folks, that's gonna end it for today. Hey, I appreciate you coming along. Ooh, that's a black nose, sweet. Black nose, very nice, 11, 11 and a half fish. Uh, thanks for coming along and enjoying the, we're back, baby, live scope the helm. The active captain being able to video, being able to show you those, those videos. So uh, I really do appreciate you watching and sticking with me today with, uh, with all the work and everything, but we're fishing now. And uh, the beauty of, of live scope right there is unbelievable. Let's see if we can. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. Hey, check me out on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm posting there quite a bit. Share a like, I appreciate it. Please subscribe, I appreciate it. Good fish.